to kick things off for this show, th this is sort of a, a special show in that we are talking about instead of doing uh, our normal you know, rundown of uh, the news and uh, current events and maybe a, a reading series, what we're doing on this episode is a little bit different. We're doing a single topic. And this was sort of inspired by like something that we sort of came across accidentally last week, and then we thought it would be a good idea to do a show. This week's show is going to be all about the weird and wonderful world of conservative political cartoonists it's and the, cartoons. It's the Chapo Comics Cavalcade. <laughs> yeah, you guys are used to our smart shows where we you know, talk about the Noid or we notice that a movie from 2006 is bad, but you know, we're going to be having fun today. Uh, yeah, we're, we're going to cut loose and, and examine uh, a genre of art. It's a subgenre. Like there is the category of like newspaper editorial cartoons, which is al already uh, you know bad. No, they're known for you know being not funny, incredibly poorly drawn, and just generally like the the scribblings of sort of octogenarian cranks of mm. all stripes. However. The conservative editorial political cartoon is a subgenre that I think can really best be compared to outsider art, you know, sort of like, yeah. like the works of Henry Darger. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, like if that. Henry Darger got really riled up about hip hop knockout game thugs. <laughs> instead of, uh, instead of alien butterfly -like strangling small girls children. with male genitalia. Yeah. Um, they, they, well, the thing that. Henry just, Eichenwald. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny thing about the comparing Darger to conservative uh, political cartoonists is that their understanding of human anatomy is similarly <laughs> skewed yes. and bizarre. Yeah. So we've compiled sort of a, we're going to take a, a sort of tour through what I think is sort of the, the masters of the form, some of the highlights of like the, the, the best artists working in this genre. And uh, I don't know, where, where, do, where do you want to start? Well, day by day is fresher in our memories. Right? I think we should save day by day. Yeah, I think that's like okay. that, that's our, our, our finale. All right. right. How about, a, well, you like this one. I want Dry Bones. Okay, Dry Bones, dude. One okay. of my favorites. One oh, of I, my favorites. I wasn't really familiar with, with, with Dry Bones. It's but, really simple. It's, it's like a two-word elevator pitch. Zionist Ziggy. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. It's about a lonely old man who talks to his dog about Israel. <laughs> <laughs> the drawing style is incredibly simplistic and there are often many of them are single panels and there's just no joke whatsoever i've got a few right in front of me i think you'll enjoy uh this one is he's of course he's against bds this guy is very 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 pro-israel i think he was born in brooklyn or something like what that what do we know about the, the person what is it first of all who's the guy who draws and creates dry bones i looked it up but then i didn't care uh, <laughs> Jeff jeffrey goldberg <laughs> Uh, okay, here's one. Dry Bones. This one's called Stop the BDS Bullying, and it's, uh, it's Ziggy. Uh, he's <laughs> holding a man by the collar, a much smaller man by the collar, and the man is holding signs that say BDS, Jews out, boycott Israel, Jews out, BDS. Okay, so they repeat. Yeah. Uh, and the, there's another title called Fight Campus Anti-Semitism, and then a bubble that says, if not us, then who? If not now, then when? And there's a dog, and just the man's dog, and the dog has Stop BDS written on its chest. <laughs> and okay. So that's like the level of humor. Well, uh, there's here. a couple things going on here that I think are indicative. Uh, I want to I get down, drill down into okay. the actual content of this, but I think there's a couple things in this single comic strip that's indicative of the genre at large. So you begin with uh, the incredibly uh, amateurish artwork. Um, then another very important thing about um, political cartooning is that it, everything has to be covered in words because yeah. there, can ne there can never be any question or ambiguity about what everything in the cartoon is supposed to represent. But what I like is that sometimes there are so many words, it, it muddles the meaning of it anyway. It's so direct, you have to wonder if it's about something else. It's what? like, it says repeatedly like Jews out and it has some like holocaust -y language about, you know how terrible it is when people don't buy soda stream but it's just so in your face you're like are you sure this is what it's about because i don't know well why, okay first of all why, why does the dog have stop bds written on him the dog who looks like spuds mckenzie is against um bds also it's, it's very here, here you go Matt. he's a lacoud lacoud dog and also, uh, what what is is Dry Bones the name of the character? The sort of Ziggy. No, I don't character? actually understand the name because Dry is something that would refer to humor, but Bones is that also like an old comedy term? Dry Bones is a condition you have after you're hit with white phosphorus for for okay. being anti-Semitic. 
<laughs> what the fuck does that even mean? Well, well, that's, well the, the, the actual like speech bubble, which is again, it's not clear if it's a speech bubble. Like the words are like badly placed in it. They're they're connecting. It could be the, a poster. The border of it could be a thought bubble. It could be a speech bubble. It's not clear, but it is a reference to Primo Levi, which I think is also ironic because he was known late in his life for sort of turning on Israel during the first Lebanon war and then killing himself after a particularly mean uh, commentary magazine piece. Whether the two are related or not, hard to say, but he took a lot of shit from right-wing Jews in America for, if, quote, if, turning if, against Israel. If you'll notice here, the student being uh, uh, beaten up here, the, uh, the BDS student, is wearing what appears to be like a, a, a medieval uh, neck ruffle. Oh, that's <laughs> that's supposed, like, that is supposed to be a kafaya. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but uh, why does one guy have four, post, four posters? Because no one's in BDS, and uh, you know it's like a marginal movement of anti-Semites, and that's why we have to talk about it all the time and be terrified of it and make it illegal. Here's a few more. Uh, he's also a big fan of Jonathan Pillar and thinks Jonathan Pillar should be Hero. freed. Uh, here's one. Uh, this is Ziggy again <laughs> talking directly <laughs> to the audience. Eli Lake face directly into the camera. Uh, I believe his name is Mr. Shuldig, and so this is captioned Mr. Shuldig's advice. The way for Trump to now save his trip to Israel is to bring Jonathan Pollard with him. Isn't it Jonathan Pollard, first of all? Pollard, Pollard. Pollard. Jonathan Pollard. Pollard. Well, when is this? It's Kafifi. That's Kafifi. Kafifi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Kafifi. Oh, check this out. Okay, Person so, of Kafaya. Uh, and here's another one. This is a, a, a caricature that's, of this Pollard. Is a, yeah, that's that is the, the best art you uh, on. No, yeah. that looks exactly like um, uh, the Rob Pol Reiner? Yeah, yeah, Rob Reiner. It looks like Rob Reiner. I always yeah. Wait a minute, that, that's not Rob Reiner? No, that's, that's Jonathan Pollard. That's Pollard. I always thought Pollard looked like every guy who gets a lot of UTIs and like later they find child porn on his computer. Uh, that's like a type of guy. That classic guy. No, that is a type of guy. If you lived your life the, more thoroughly, U, you would know that guy. The UTI <laughs> child porn guy. Well, he just has like a UTI look in his face. So, for those of the for those who maybe aren't, Jonathan Pollard was a guy who was convicted of spying on him. Uh, he was doing espionage on him. I think he leaked secrets to the Navy or something to Israel and was put yep. in jail for it. Mm -hmm. And then he's he's been a sort of like lost cause for like the hard right. In hard Jewish right in, in Israel and America. Interesting thing about Pollard. So he stole nuclear secrets. The Israelis, it's not that they wanted them for themselves. They actually sold them to Russia. So Russia would do a population transfer of Jews, quote unquote, and just like losers who claimed that they like gefilte fish, who could claim Jewish, so they could offset Arab birth rates. Because, you know, Zionism is normal. It's a regular thing to believe in. It's a regular thing to do. There's nothing wrong with Israel. You're anti-Semitic if you say it. The hardest thing you can be is just like a type of white person with a slightly different name who sometimes looks different, like your eyes look different. That is basically the same as being black. And if anyone ever says that it's wrong to steal nuclear secrets and, you know, if, if you're a guy who has child porn on his computer and UTIs, to do that so you can have a population transfer to keep up your fucked up ethnocracy that's only existed for like... Since 1948, then you're racist. Then you're like the same as the alt right, and we'll never stop crying about it. We'll never stop crying about how we're the most oppressed minority, even though there are 70 horrible magazines where we can be like, how it's hard to be a Jew in Halloween. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now, Virgil, uh, for the Jonathan Pollard uh, cat cartoon here, the, the, the caption that just restates what the first one says, but underneath it in parentheses, you just write. Neil Hamburger voice. Oh, right. So no, would you like to the, read no, this? The next one should be right. So he uh, does okay. four panel ones. And actually, Matt, you do a good Neil Hamburger. Could oh, you do this yeah. one? Uh, so what am, I, what am I doing at yeah, this point? Just uh, read this comic to everyone in the Neil Hamburger okay. voice. What are you doing? Oh, sorry, are you doing? Sorry. That one? Yep, this All right. one. Uh, so so uh, Will, you do the other guy. Okay. So this is, the, what, this is the guy with the newspaper talking to another guy. Neither one of them are the Ziggy, I should say. Egyptian exports to Israel are increasing <laughs> daily. <laughs> That's nice. Not really. What they're exporting to Israel is a flood of their unwanted African migrants. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. No fucking way. Uh, this fucking rules, dude. Now, oh, my God. Is, 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 <laughs> <laughs> spitting, spitting your bow tie. They're good. Would you, would you drop uh, muddy water into a pool? <laughs> Can I do the other like? 
how can Donald <laughs> Trump save his trip to Israel? Bring Jonathan Pollard with him. <laughs> oh, dude, this is so fucking good. Is, is Drybones? Is it, it's not syndicated in any newspaper. This is just a web. It comic, is. It's right? in the Jerusalem Post. Oh, oh yes. God. I, lo- I love. I love how there used to be like uh, like Jews were notorious for like we were good at comedy, and now it's like this. <laughs> like, that's how bad at like be, being an ethno state is. It's true. I mean, you can't you can't make a stronger argument that Jews really need to be diaspora because American Jews very funny. Israeli yeah. Jews not at all. Yeah, think not about all the all. funny American Jews like Sheldon Adelson, <laughs> Haim Saban, uh, <laughs> Jared Kushner, Mar- Mar- Marty Perez, <laughs> Marty Perez, Jeffrey Epstein, <laughs> <laughs> classic <laughs> prankster Jeffrey Epstein, now, <laughs> social experiment, secret plane. <laughs> The social experiment going on a trip with Bill Clinton. (laughs) Now, you would say from the drawings that you've seen so far that this is very bad artwork. This is just terrible. Awful. Now, wait for this Trump caricature coming up. You will will plot. Oh, hell yeah, dude. (laughs) Right? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my. No way. That's not great. (laughs) Not good for the bad. Folks, dry bones is skewing me. (laughs) I will be stepping down. Uh, I I don't have the words to describe this. This is like an MS well, Paint drawing are, are, someone would make as a joke. <laughs> are we, are we, can we create some sort of document that we can link? We have yeah, to. We, we should otherwise, post all this of is these. an insane This also endeavor. this should be a meme. Frankly, this Trump. Did you get a but look? Yeah, at this no. Brendan? We absolutely need to put this out there, or else this is insane. Describing things. Okay, there, need to be able there you to look go, at them Brendan. While they're listening. Okay. Exactly. Uh, so here is this uh, this Sing along Trump. Uh, you you have to look at this. I I don't. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to describe it. Yeah. it it kind of looks like they left Donald Trump in a hot car. <laughs> no, it's like Peter Griffith. It's like somebody. It's Peter, like Peter Griffith. Griffith kind of, Peter Griffith. Peter Griffith. I'm gonna whatever. say you're the I don't moon, know. Lois. I watched that show. I don't know what his fucking name is. He's like Peter Griffin if they took the glasses off and gave him Donald Trump's hair. Uh, not me? even Donald Trump's hair. This is. It's, it's like mean. a surfer guy's hair. To yeah. me, it looks like you know how like on the the, the new like. In app, like Apple Instant Messenger, you can like draw shit and send it as a text to people. It look this looks like it was drawn with a finger on on a, on a like a cell phone screen. Well, okay, yeah, the art's not great, but you can't beat this comedy. Yeah, let's read the caption. Oh, yeah, yeah. Read this the is caption. A really funny. senior <laughs> member of the Trump team told Israel that the Western Wall is part of the West Bank and not ours. Yet another advisor that Donald needs to fire. Nailed him. Oh, my God. Uh, now, now, as bad as this one is, look at the next one. Look at the next Donald Trump here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that was that's like Hillary. Hillary. No, that's, that's supposed Hillary. to be Trump. No, that's Hillary. Wait, no, that's got to be Hillary. No, that's see, Hillary. read the caption. Okay. The swamp drainer asked the swamp things to vote for his proposals, and they wouldn't. Yeah, that's... That's got to no, be No, the Hillary. swamp drainer is Trump. It, yeah, it that is. is Trump, yeah. It's it Trump looks with... Like with uh, no, that's Trump. No, that's Trump wearing lipstick, it appears. Yeah. And with oh. Hillary's hair. Oh, so he's saying Trump is taking hormones <laughs> since he's been in Washington. This is very, like, blue velvet. Okay, I like, I like these, uh, these swamp creatures that just look like turds with teeth. It's, once again, really good art. Well, n- not just the art, but this also this, this gets to another <laughs> uh, trope of the genre, which is the unbelievable lack of anything even resembling humor a joke or a punchline nope. like it it, it it again very inscrutable what's yeah. being done here yeah and mallard fillmore is similar to that yeah i mean everyone says like humorless sjw's and like yeah all the five billion web comics about like a girl with an uneven haircut who like yells at guys is those aren't good, but they have punchlines. Like the punchline, try the pun- to be funny. Yeah, the punchline is like, uh, well, why don't you go read Fight Club, fuck ass? But uh, the, one of those compound swears, but it has a setup, a build, and then a payoff. Yeah, but like, this is just like a guy yelling at you. Compound is, swears. This are is a guy who looks form of comedy, but at least it's an attempt. This at is like if you've ever had an older relative who demands you go on birthright for some reason. It's the same I've type had experience. That. Not yes, you. I've d- never had Jewish. that. You're Jewish. No. Your last name right. is Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's he's consistently mad about the UN. He thinks Gazans are uh, rabid dogs that should be starved. You know, pretty standard middle of the road stuff. He's, yeah, he's a moderate, radical moderate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this next one, I you'll have to explain this to me because this is the most right. forgot to tell a joke. <laughs> Let me put on my so hat. Sorry, real quick uh, before yeah. before you do that one, as you were scrolling through, I just saw one where it's the uh, it's the it's just a single panel. It's just the old-looking Ziggy, and he's just saying, 
the, the state one? of Jordan is Palestine. No, that's the one I was going to oh, show okay. right here. No, that's uh, that's that's the Zionist argument. Yeah, is yeah, that, yeah. Is that the Palestinians just need to be absorbed into the country? Jordan is to. Palestine. Gaza is Egypt. That's that like shrugging. That's like saying, uh, well, actually, it's not like saying because this is correct. We don't need Israel because we have Long Island. <laughs> I mean, that's true, but the Jordan thing isn't. So this is like a big argument they made. I don't. Even yeah, it's one. Of, it's argument. like it's like you less hear it in fervent Zionists. I mean, you hear it in those. But the people who make this argument the most are like American Ned Flanders evangelicals. Like that's a real yeah. Christian thing because they like sort of like weird misinterpretations of Old Testament geography, and they're like, you know, they're very nice. They'll like give you cookies if your house burns down, but then they're like, hey, the Palestinians can go live in Jordan, Italy, Jordan, well, and. It, yeah, PF, PFLP actually did go to Jordan and yeah. pissed uh, King Hussein off so bad that he just fucking murked thousands of them in one night in September in the 70s. The Black September. Yeah, Black September. Here's another single panel one. It's from the Department That's of... That's why they have the Steam sale now. <laughs> <laughs> it's from the Department of Stupid Explanations. Oh, good. Uh, it's the man talking to the dog, and it's he's saying to the dog, the Abbas asked Israel to cut off Gaza's electricity. So we did. Well, boom, got him. Here's another thing that I don't get about Dry Bones. Does the dog ever interact with this this old Ziggy, or is he I just don't, looking? No, at the him? dog never talks. The dog is just so. This He's is a man. Just an old, this is an an old man, man talking to a dog about about Israel Palestine. But the, but the dog doesn't like talk to him like Garfield or anything. Or, this, or, repre no. this represents American Jewish families who are like one of the like worst ones, like the Kushners type family, where. All the kids are jockeying for inheritance so they can like make their hip hop themed restaurant in East New York with mm -hmm. armed guards or with fake bullet holes in the wall. <laughs> and so they just stare at their shitty grandfather who like made a lot of money because he short sold the King David Hotel in nineteen forty eight. <laughs> they just stare at him until he's done talking, until he's done saying, Well, if you marry a Jewish girl, you can have my boat. <laughs> and uh, but he's so used to just no interaction. Except for like, we love you, we love you, Grandpa. Or like, uh, Grandpa, I'm gonna, you know, major in uh, fucking Zionist math at Wesleyan. You're getting such a window. So yeah, that, that, that he just Jewish forgets what today. it's like to talk to anyone. So he just talks to the dog about Jonathan Pollard, and it's the same experience as talking to all his grandkids that are all named Hunter and Jordan. Well, it's my, my favorite thing about this one is, is that the dude. Drew the guy's eyes so close together that the two circles intertwine, so it looks like a Venn diagram. Yeah. And then he just said, fuck it, that's good enough. <laughs> well, it's a missed opportunity because, uh, fine, I get it that you're just trying to lecture people about Israel, but I don't know, you could like have an, a, another panel that's the dog doing something funny, you know, something redeeming. Isn't that the premise of cartoons? Yeah, the, the dog uh, shooting flares at a flotilla in Gaza. <laughs> well, I was thinking the dog would like eat the man's dinner while he's just like senile and talking <laughs> yeah. to the television set. That would be a great comics yeah, that would be hilarious. The dog acting like a dog. Yeah, but uh, the problem is that this guy is supposed to be cool and smart and not someone that the dog is ignoring while he eats his hungry man. Uh, the last one I have here I selected is uh, it's about Bernie Sanders. It's uh, called At the Seder, A Place for Everyone. Having seated the wise, the simple, and he who doesn't know to ask, Mr. Schuldig invites the wicked son, and he says, Hey, Bernie. Ah, oh, fuck you. Okay. Fucking nailed him. Well, that, that, fuck that, you, that, Bernie. That, that, that does have the semblance of a joke. That is there, kind there of is joke. A, is that's a, that's, joke. that's yeah. actually clever. Yeah, that's the most there. joke ask yeah. of the things he's put out here so far. So uh, the last piece of information about this guy, his name is uh, Yakov Kershin, and he's got an Indiegogo called Help Fight Anti-Semitism <laughs> with the Dry Bones cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> I really wouldn't call that what Dry Bones is doing because <laughs> you heard what I've been saying for this last yeah, exactly. It's, it did yeah. not decrease anti yeah, I, I would so. say that, I mean, uh, the amount of anti-Semitism that was spewed in the, just the last 20 minutes we've been talking is more than any amount of Hasbara he's done in his entire career. Yeah, I single hand, like Sheldon Adelson is going to need like $3 billion to counteract what I just did. <laughs> he uh, has raised $42,000 and he says his next step is to create an online <laughs> Dry Bones Academy of cartoon <laughs> advocacy and activism. <laughs> We need to empower a next generation with the tools to speak out when impartial journalists remain silent. A next generation who will have the tools to speak out against the enemies of civilization who incite violence against Jews around the world while they rape, murder, and crucify Christians across the Middle East and Africa. And to do this, we'll need $100,000. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, yeah, that's pitched to the McMansion dipshits in suburban Dallas. He got money, though, and it's like, you know, I see why. It's like the Dry Bones Academy for Drawing Cartoons, the Billy Joel Academy for Driving... 
the the, the, cent, the, the center for authentic cartooning. Yeah, <laughs> the Eric the Eric Clapton Center for Window Safety. Now, on, the, on this anime on this animation, <laughs> all here, names associated. Uh, here's the guy who makes the cartoons. Here's some incredibly old woman. And he's here's some ancient. very young like he's uh, got nice dry, boy. He's got dry bones. Uh, it's a dry boy. Best part about this is uh, donations of five hundred dollars or more are tax deductible. Why? <laughs> I don't know. What the fuck? <laughs> yes. Oh, if you want to support dry bones, <laughs> why? you will get a tax deduction. What? Does he have a disability or something? Like, yeah, why? wait a minute. That, is that a, wait a minute. That sounds like a scam. <laughs> that sounds like we need to contact the government about this. I'm not in favor of calling police. But you know what? Though, if we show Trump, deductible. if we tro- show Trump the critical cartoons. He's gonna get audited. That's it for. Uh, oh, so that's, that's it for dry bones. Moving right? on from dry bones, can we talk about one of the the more classic like newspaper uh, cartoonists? Oh yeah, yeah. I know like, exactly yeah. who you're talking okay. about. It's America's 29th favorite duck, <laughs> Mallard, <laughs> Mallard <laughs> Fillmore, icon, icon of conservative Speaking comics. Speaking of comics that never even come close to having a joke or a punchline. No, not yeah, at all. Yeah, never. He's just a duck who's rude. He's just this <laughs> smug prick. <laughs> In a fucking PUA outfit, lecturing you about the estate tax. Yeah, Mallard <laughs> Fillmore. I fucking Fillmore. hate that goddamn duck. What a fucking cunt. That's, so, that's so irritating because when I was a kid <laughs> in our local newspaper, we had a, a comic section, and then they put two comics on the editorial section because they were political, and it was Ballard Fillmore and Doonesbury. Yep. yep. But yep. the thing is, is that like half of Doonesbury is just like, hey, are you going to the farmer's market tomorrow? It's like, I don't know. Before we start on Mallard Fillmore, I fucking hate Doonesbury. <laughs> well, yeah, Doonesbury Every sucks. fucking Doonesbury strip is just like boomer and Gen X sexual psychosis. Oh, it sucks. Of, li- of like, uh, uh, I cheated on my wife, but I feel bad because I'm friends with the woman I cheated on. Uh, I don't want to go to yoga. Uh, <laughs> shut wait, the wait, fuck well, up. That's the thing. That's what's so infuriating because like, that, so the two political cartoons that would be on the editorial would be that person like whining about their quinoa or whatever, and then the asshole duck just making a point by point argument about why we need to invade Iraq. Yeah. It's like one of those is actually political, and the other is just indulgent horseshit. That's how you make people Nazis is when you're like, these are the only two things you can be. Yeah. Uh, Mallard Fillmore has been syndicated since 1994 by King Feature Syndicate. And correct me if I'm wrong, I can't remember the name of this comic, but there was another political cartoon with a very similar drawing style to Mallard Fillmore. It was called, like, Shoes or something. And it's, like, its main character was a chicken who works as, like, a DC journalist. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. It was a duck. It was a duck. Another okay. duck. It was a duck. I remember his stupid face. <laughs> and it was, and it was also incredibly fucking boring. This was like at uh, least it was, from it wasn't the eighties, maybe seventies. But it was boring. No, it was. Yeah, it was just like, um, did you hear what the lobbyist said at the bar? Like some bullshit. Like, well, that. yeah, I remember that. He also wore a little outfit. It, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. like called shoes, right? It was. It was called, you were absolutely right. It was right. called the shoeish question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's what cartoons used to be like. It used to be just like uh, people, you know, talking about something they wanted to do, like Gil Thorpe. It was just about like a kid in high school who played football, but all the comics were like, uh, Gil, go to the supply locker. And then the guy at the supply locker is like, Gil, uh, if someone's half black, should you let them sit at a restaurant? Because it was made in 1953. And it, that's what you used to do because everyone was on uh, barbiturates all the time. <laughs> yeah, this is what he looked like. And you're right, he was a chicken. It was a chicken. That's what shoe Yeah, like. yeah. Oh, I remember that oh, one. Oh, it was just yeah. called Shoe, just yeah, Shoe. Yeah. Uh, Fuck that guy. He sucked. So, <laughs> Mallard Fillmore is, so is about an anthropomorphic duck who works as a reporter and is, of course, a conservative, very snarky. And, like, uh, the recurring image from Mallard Fillmore is just the duck saying some quip and then looking right at the viewer, <laughs> making these snarky eyes. Like, yeah. Quip is way him. too generous. It's not, it's more like just something you would say under your breath that you later get referred to HR for. Uh, some of the characters, some of the antagonists, the libs in the strip are Mr. Noseworthy, Mallard's <laughs> boss. <laughs> who's a triple parenthesis. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Noseworthy. He has a very big nose, it's true, and he's a parody of political <laughs> correctness in America. Oh, yeah. Uh, according to Wikipedia. He's also a fan of smoked fish. Yeah. He loves smoked fish. He loves ruining the white gene pool with immigration. <laughs> Uh, Chet is a co-worker of Mallard's. He is an arrogant, vain, superficial, Botox-injecting, clothes-obsessed Caucasian male. In a series of strips in two, late 2003, he discovered he is a metrosexual. Ooh, topical. Ooh, okay. 
among Mallard's allies are Dave Quat, a conservative Vietnamese man. And now this is a trope that you see uh, over and over again in these cartoons, uh, just inventing a, a black person or a Muslim or minority of some kind, and they're just giving him all the uh, same opinions of it a, was a the conservative original old Vivian white James. man. Yeah. Yes. And it's this is kind of what the Bernie bro thing is. You just like it's like Joan Walsh's plus me tweet. It's yeah. like, well, actually, everyone who agrees with me is like a multicultural coalition of people, and everyone who's a fucking idiot lib in my office, they're actually white. Uh, Mallard Fillmore publishes daily, and God, they're just so terrible. They're way too boring to even think about. But Bruce Tinsley, the artist's personal life, is very engaging. Oh, this in, guy rules. So the first like big thing that happened with him is everyone ignored this comic. It was just fucking garbage. And uh, until America the Book, the the Daily Show book came out, which did a you know a decent parody of Mallard Fillmore. Uh, I've got it right in front of me here. Oh, that's all right. There we go. Uh, <clears throat> this is the duck. <laughs> Liberals want to tie the hands of industry with more environmental legislation. Why must we punish our most productive citizens with an income tax? Oops, I forgot to tell a joke. That was that, that is, was in America the book, and that yeah, is yeah, also right. that is every ex- single Mallard Fillmore exactly. Comic. Yeah. Bruce Tinsley uh, either got mad at this or was just very opportunistically trying to invent a feud between him and John Stewart. So he did an entire week of panels uh, with a uh, f- a caricature. Oh man! Oh, of John oh whoa, man! Whoa! <laughs> Holy uh, shit, dude! Each one. Each one had the exact same premise. Uh, I, I can't read all these words. Holy fuck. Wow. Okay, guys, all that stuff I said about dry bones, I take it back. We do need a Jewish state now. <laughs> You're going to get programmed by Bruce Timsley. Uh, dude, the Holocaust is going to happen to us with guys like this. Holy shit. He did a whole week, and they all had the same kind of model. Uh, three bubbles of text that are stupid, and then John Stewart at the end uh, saying something like, oh, uh, I'm John Stewart. I have sex with children. <laughs> and this is proving a point that that's, there's no... I'm sorry, there's, there's, that wasn't the argument. That wasn't what the book was satirizing, uh, just like by putting words in Mallard's Fillmore's mouth to make him look like an asshole. The point of it was obviously that your comic isn't funny. It's fucking yeah. sucks. And your retort is... Uh, no, you're you're fucking so fucking Jew. The retort is uh, John Stewart saying, and I'm, I'm reading this verbatim, I didn't <laughs> create that fake cartoon. It was one of the drunken underage boys at my sleepover. <laughs> Holy shit, this guy invented the Mike Cernovich playbook of just like anyone who says anything about me is a pedophile. Can we move, can we move on from, uh, from, from Bruce Tinsley and Mallard Fillmore? Oh, to- sure. Oh, oh, the, oh, oh, first oh yeah. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. The, the, the last interesting part about Bruce Tinsley's personal life is in 2005, he was arrested for a DUI. And okay. <laughs> nice. Again, you know, this is another recurring Hero. trope when it comes Who to conservative us? political cartoonists. And what made it very interesting is that about a couple years later, uh, the judge in Bruce Sinsley's DUI case was up for re-election. And Bruce, in his nationally syndicated cartoon, attacked <laughs> this local judge. <laughs> and I've got the comic in front of me. Uh, Hi, it's judicial candidate Roddy Mc, uh, McGilvery. Again, reminding voters not to waste time examining the record and qualifications, uh, in quotation scare quotes, of all those aspiring judges, alder persons, and coroners on the ballot, just vote the straight party ticket. Support the proud American tradition of, quote, coattails. After all, in the un- if the unqualified can't get government jobs, what can we do? That is a man Nailed who is him. not mad. That is, he's not mad about his DUI. That proves he's innocent. Oh my God, this is fucking awesome. I just like the idea that, like, his editor or whatever, in these like, this is like, a syndicated newspaper column, that, a cartoon, where he's using it to attack the judge in his DUI case. Oh, fuck t- Tennessee or wherever. That that that, that fucking hey, rules. I Dude, totally yeah, that rules. Like, what do we what do we have this podcast for if not to have petty feuds with people who've slighted us? Can you imagine if someone believed in us that much? They were just like, sure, like whatever grudge you want to make your show about, go for it. I trust your art, your judgment, and your punchlines that are As like. Let's do it. You know. Uh, Let's start calling out people who have like wronged us in our lives. Uh, I only have like a few pages, <laughs> people. All right. Well, next week we come with our grievance list, and then we're fucking. We're just gonna duck hunt all of them. Oh, d- duck hunt! Yeah, we're gonna Ballard duck hunt. Filmer. We're gonna no. duck hunt everybody who ever fucked hunt. with us yeah. in our lives. Rubber Cat, one of my favorite people online, has been uh, observing Ballard Fillmore for several years now, and uh, from his website, very good examples of. We should. We'll link to it in the description. Very good examples of what a fucking hack Bruce Tinsley is. Uh, one cartoon from January 2000, the Liberal Lexicon 2000. 
uh, their, quotations, use as a singular possessive pronoun. For example, someone left their bike in this yard. Mallard says, this politically correct attempt at being gender neutral was actually endorsed by the National Teachers Association. Need what? any better proof that it's just plain wrong? What? Again, no joke. Then, uh... He, wait, he's a... He's a, he's a he, 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 he's, he's angry because the pronoun there... Like has replaced the, the gendered in, pronoun, presumably. Uh, mm. oh. But if you don't know who left the bike wait. there, why wouldn't you say there? Well, then, you have to gender as much as possible. <laughs> you got to gender day, every word. Yeah. We need to turn English into Spanish. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. You yeah. need gender for everything. Rubber Cat's caption is, thinks about the issue really, really hard over the course of 17 years. 2017, Mallard Fillmore. Okay, how about we just use it? For everybody, because they uh, singular is just wrong. What? I, no uh, joke. I just, I can't imagine getting angry about any of this. No, uh, but no, but, but yeah, this is a. Uh, like I said, the, the audience for Mallard Fillmore must be in their like oh, nine late hundreds. You know who the, <laughs> yeah, dude, you know who the audience who the fuck, like, reads comic strips <laughs> you, for Christ's sake? You know who the audience for Mallard Fillmore is? Do you remember the email we got in the show account the other day? After my piano article, where there was a Reinhard Heydrich joke in there, and it was from a guy with an AOL email address that was like, Leave Reinhard Heydrich out of your articles, Jew boy. And then it said, Sent from my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> that is the audience. Well, the thing, for about, the thing about Mallard Filmer is I, I guarantee when Bruce Tinsley files, you know, draws these cartoons, he's thinking to himself, Ooh, this is really going to rile up the loony left. But no, nobody has ever gotten mad about Mallard Filmer. No one, yeah. No, the most emotion he has ever pulled out of a political opponent is just bafflement of like, What? What is yeah, like, this well, even supposed to be? Why does this exist, you know? Yeah, I, this is way, way past its expiration date. But why don't we move on? Uh, yeah, I'd like to, I, I, there's a couple artists that I, I want to highlight. Uh, the first of which is um, the political cartoonist known as Bronco. Mm, mm. Bronco. Strong entry. Like, you know, Branco, or I, I don't know. It's like Bronco. He, uh, you know, he, uh, he has cartoons uh, at, a, uh, he, at a place called Comically Incorrect. Oh, AF Bronco this guy's a cartoons. fucking cad, dude. No and, um, holes are barred there, Frank. Yeah, that's and, right. And, like, you know, he's, he, I, I see Bronco is, is, I think he's syndicated a lot on, like, uh, right-wing blogs. I, 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 see yep. his, I see his work crop up there. And, again, like, he has a, he has a style where they're, like, this, this is the, the traditional editorial cartoon where it's, like, a single panel and, like, a ton of things that are labeled. But he, what I think is interesting about Bronco is his complete inability to caricature caricature his targets of his political satire or whatever, because it's just like mm -hmm. the inability to like capture in a pithy way his his opponent or or the person he's he's tilting at. It's just, they they just not only do they not look like the person that they're trying to portray. It doesn't really capture anything at all about their personality or whatever. Like for instance, you know, here's one of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, this one it just goes so bad. <laughs> this is uh, terrible. Th this one just says, "Where is Obama's manhood?" And it's a cartoon that portrays Obama and Michelle. And then Obama has his hand out, and Michelle is like reaching into her purse, like, presumably to like get her get, get get his nuts. And and he goes, "Just till after the Ukraine crisis." And Michelle is looking very sternly at him and reaching into a handbag that's labeled Michelle. And what I, <laughs> what I want to note about this is that, okay, like, they do the classic thing of doing Obama with the really big ears, but he also has, like, a pot belly, which is funny because Obama isn't fat. He, you know, like, he was a pretty slender guy. Yeah. And also, they're really into drawing Michelle Obama as fat and having, like, they, they're obsessed well, with and manly. Arms. I mean, she's yeah. got these giant arms there. And, and they always yeah. are implying that she's a guy. <laughs> All of the Michelle Obama caricatures from right wing cartoons are that she's a dude. That's the implication. And and the other thing is like they're with with the right wing uh, uh, cartoonist portrayal of Obama. Some of them like the I think Michael Ramirez is another one who goes completely in the opposite direction and just portrays Obama sort of like as a stick figure, kind of like a stick insect looking creature with just giant ears. And I think some of them go fully in the opposite direction because the temptation is always to just portray any black person as sort of ape-like yeah. or sort of simian in their features. Mm -hmm. The uh, former New York Post editorial cartoonist, Sean Delanis, was actually had to be let go because uh, right it was the same week that uh, that chimp in Connecticut went insane and ripped yes, that yeah, woman's yeah, face yeah. off. Classic and was, apes and, went, and, was, and was shot by the police. I think it was the same week as Obama's like stimulus package. And the, the, the cartoon was 
two police officers shot dead a chimp, but the chimp was like labeled Obama's stimulus or yeah, something. I remember that. And uh, it was just a little too, little too close for comfort, for, even for the New York Post. All right, moving on. I, I want to talk about uh, now uh, Ben Garrison. Ben Garrison ben- is, you know how we say a lot going on? Probably the most going on ever is Ben Garrison. Ben Garrison is a little bit different than these other guys in that I think he's like a slightly better artist. Like he's pretty good at like his lines and like what he's portraying is more uh, complicated than the normal editorial cartoonist. Yeah. But it's like what's funny about Garrison, particularly in his portrayal of Donald Trump, is not that it's amateurishly drawn. It's just his mentally projected image of Donald Trump. Who is hell, so hilarious? Hello, handsome. <laughs> because he always, he, it's like he's this muscle man. Yeah, he's like a, a chisel shaped Adonis with a giant flowing mane of hair. Giant flowing mane of hair, not some ridiculous comb over yeah. slash wig. He's I mean, not like, perfectly fucking rectangular <laughs> like the real Trump is. <laughs> yeah. He's not a perfect cube of gelatinous. Oh, fat. You, you know what Trump looks like? The uh, energy shields from Dune. <laughs> I, okay, oh. that's good. Oh. Watch the movie, it. please. Uh, but what I like about Ben Garrison is that, like, he what he does is he takes the normal editorial cartoon thing of like labeling everything. Like a a guy will be like pulling a like it'll be like Obama pulling a big a big weight, and the weight will just be labeled like the debt or something. And he'll be like, "Why can't our economy take off?" And it's like just says you know uh, the minimum wage or something is holding mm-hmm. it down. Bronco does that, but like. He oh he's very generous and he that he provides such a wealth of information and characters in each one of his his panels. They're yeah, fun that, that everything, everything has to be labeled, which ben I kind of like because it's 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 not a conventional political cartoon. It's so busy. It's like a like a big like Where's Waldo illustration. Yeah, it's almost like it's like kind of like an optical illusion almost. There's yeah, so much like going you on. You're sure you're it. missing something. Yeah, if you stare at it long enough. Uh, Trump's dick pops out. And the I, I just, they make Trump into John Bastow. That's the fucking best thing. Like a man notorious for being, fa- just look at Trump's head. Look at his, Trump's chiseled jawline. Trump's jawline, there are no sharp lines to it. It doesn't begin or end anywhere. He just has like a fat sack of custard around his head. But in this one where he's driving. I want to describe this one. This is a, it says Trump Ranch. And uh, Trump is driving a, a giant Cadillac with like steer horns on the front with a big T and the license plate says Made in America and it's a convertible and Trump has a big 10 gallon hat on that says MAGA. And what he's doing is that he's driving through like a big mud puddle that's splashing onto a figure, <laughs> uh, like a, a, a figure that's supposed to represent journalism that's just a, uh, like a, a body with a, with a CNN television, a television head and a yeah. CNN logo. And the, the media, CNN, is saying, you're all hat and no ka, and then splash, and Trump says, more cattle. Okay. And on the other side of the road, what I think is interesting <laughs> is all the cattle at the Trump ranch, which are labeled as jobs, TPP canceled, better trade deals, wall, SCOTUS. And what I like about this is that it implies that he's going to get out of his car and slaughter all of them. <laughs> They're yeah, all just going to get a bolt in their head as soon as he no, uh, gets out of the his cows Trump are, Cadillac. The, the cows ca- are smiling here. Yeah. Well, they want to die. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> as we all do. In, we all want to be killed by our blessed Lord God Emperor Trump. These are like the, the Garrison in the same way. What, what what Da Vinci was to the Renaissance. I think that Garrison kind of is to Geo Hell in our current period. And uh, Garrison also, um, I also like him because not only does he portray uh, the villains, you know, the, the Nancy Pelosi's, the Bernie Sanders, the Barack Obama's, the, the campus PC leftists, uh, he also portrays the heroes of the alt-right and, and the MAGA people in that he has loving portrayals not just of Trump, but also of people like uh, Stefan Molyneux, Milo, uh, does he ever draw on Cernovich? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He draws yeah. Cernovich all the time. The, so, in the yeah. uh, Safe Space cartoon. <laughs> yeah, the Safe Space cartoon is really good. Uh, can we d- pull up the one where uh, it's I'm, I'm, asteroids coming down on dinosaurs? Yeah, and the I'm asteroids lo- are like PJW. I'm looking through it now. Ooh, I haven't even seen half of these. I think this is... Oh, cool. Yeah, Steve Bannon. Oh, this one's cool. This one's uh, this one held up great. Uh, release the Bannon, and it's uh, a gigantic Steve Bannon, the Chthonian monster. It's a take on release the Kraken, yes. but it's, but it's that Bannon. It sounds nothing alike. And he's got these uh, uh, octopus arms and is, uh, you know, choking out 
uh, Mitch McConnell, Paul Ryan, uh, uh, holding Hillary, and the Hillary one is labeled cankles. I gotta say, that, <laughs> that is that is the, his most accurate uh, representation. That is very Bannon-esque. Yeah, like, just the grotesque kind of Cthulhu look. I think it's funny that he's he's portraying Bannon as an octopus. Like with the octopus is usually the, a, a trope of you know sort of right wing populist anti-Semitism, yes. and Bannon is certainly represents the that in our culture. So maybe it is accurate. Uh, oh, and this one. This one's uh, fantastic, just for the uh, just for the, the the Lovecraftian themes of it. It's the one where Trump has a, a, a like a septic vehicle called Trump's draining service, and something to drain the swamp. And uh, there's a a massive green sort of a monster. swamp thing. Yeah, yeah. the cyclopean creature labeled the Deep State (CIA) demanding, "What do you think you're doing?" And uh, swimming around the swamp are uh, Hillary and Obama. And uh, there's John Podesta as an octopus holding uh, satanic symbols and a piece of pizza. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> we should get him to do our next poster, frankly. We should get him to do our book jacket. Yeah. Uh I legitimately like his art a lot. Like, it, I think he has a very interesting style. I think he like draws. He's people. better at, at capturing the likenesses of the. I mean, obviously, his portrayal of Trump is absurd, but he is better at capturing the likenesses of of these various figures. Wait, he definitely he definitely has the hottest movie, Trump. The safe space one, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where like Stephen Molyneux yeah, is arm wrestling somebody and his yeah, 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 biceps yeah, yeah, yeah. says uh, logic and his triceps says reason. <laughs> yeah, I, I just I love the idea of somebody being that infatuated with the with the mental powers of a 60-year-old oh, psychotic in Canada. In the short term, I found this one. Uh, oh, yep, this, this one's is, This awesome, is a great dude. one. It's uh, awesome. Trump, who's... Trump's here for no good reason. He's just holding a long print out of paper. Trump but has no idea who Stephen uh, Molyneux is. Yeah, it's Stephen Molyneux, and he's holding a another piece of paper called The Untruth About Donald Trump. And he's popping all of these bubbles of screaming SJWs, oh, yeah. Yeah. saying things like Trump's a racist, Trump's a misogynist. And he's popping each one, and the pops, are, uh, his pins are labeled logic, reason, <laughs> evidence. And Stephen is saying, not an argument. Yeah, that's just kind of his catchphrase. Uh, is it really a catchphrase? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that's his catchphrase. What a well, shitty well, catchphrase. Whenever, whenever, whenever people. He wrote a fucking book called uh, The Argument. You know. uh, and here's the one, Felix, you were talking about. Oh, this one is so good. Okay, so at the center, we have Stefan Molyneux, who who's sort of like a weird Canadian man who makes videos where he screams and cries and is like he thinks that he was tortured as a child because his mom made him wipe his ass or something. And it, uh, he always just looks like he's broadcasting from a bus station bathroom. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. He, it's like the Dan Quinn videos where he was in the Starbucks bathroom and then he was like, uh, Crazy Joe, I'm going to stew you in your grave. And someone knocks on the door and goes... Uh, are you done in there? And Dan goes, I'm busy. Come back. <laughs> That's Stephen Molyneux. But anyway, he's debating with an Antifa guy whose squiggly, almost fentanyl ravished arm says name calling and it's quivering. And Stefan is saying autistic screeching is not an argument. <laughs> <laughs> and his bicep, Stefan's bicep says logic, reason, evidence on the forearm. And he's like jacked, even though Stefan Molyneux, like anyone who does YouTube for a living, is sort of like a pear shaped. Dullard. <laughs> then we have Gavin McGinnis, you know, fresh off of, you know, really getting at Islam by snowballing with Milo <laughs> and, his, his, and his wife leaving him uh, is shoving a microphone into like, I think it's it looks like kind of like uh, it's like a goatee and long hair. It's uh, and a manlet. So I would say, like, uh, Jesus from uh, fucking Big Lebowski. Yeah, he's urinating himself. There's a, yeah. a Molotov cocktail on the ground, which <laughs> he's not using. Yeah, he's like, and oh, no, not Gavin McGinnis. Uh, uh, then it's <laughs> Kiara. I don't know who the fuck that is. <laughs> looking One at, of those chicks that they all honk off to. Yeah, because she, just she any, Pepe once. any normal-looking woman who's like, uh, the West rocks. They're like, I'll fucking die for you. <laughs> uh, uh, Kiara, don't call her. There, there is, there's, there's, there's Mike. There's Mike Thurnovitz. Oh, he's doing my thing. He's doing what I do. He's protecting a woman. Yeah. Except it's the Statue of Liberty and it says free speech. Yeah, he's saying, I'm here to protect you while uh, cradling the Statue of Liberty, who's holding a copy of Gorilla Mindset. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, this fucking, uh, this is, is great because if we did right wing cartoons as a joke, it would be exactly this. Yeah. This um, is really good, dude. Uh, the, the 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 other thing I'd like to, to point out with this one, the the, the, the other the other figures um, is in the, in the lower left hand corner. There's there's a a girl, Lauren. I, is that Lauren, oh, that's Southern? Lauren Southern? Lauren Southern. Yeah. Okay, Lauren Southern, and she's wearing uh, a hat that says MAGA, and she's saying free speech is a okay. 
And she's making the, the oh, old, and she's triggering them. Yeah, she's making the them, okay yeah. gesture, which um, uh, the fucking Shaggy from Scooby Doo is like freaking out about. Uh, also, I want to point out right here: here's a Molotov cocktail on the ground labeled "violence." <laughs> 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 I Garrison is really good. Garrison's He's a fucking yeah. auteur. Like Garrison, there's a lot. There's a lot more uh, to talk about in 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 his work. Yeah, than, because uh, all those other cartoons we talked about, except for Dry Bones, like they all made us kind of depressed because it just sort of uh, kind of boring, kind of boring, and like no <laughs> jokes or there's nothing really visually interesting. But Ben Garrison is like. He's like Kojima. Like, he's created this whole parallel world that's a little more exaggerated than ours, but it's true. It's like you can't deny that when you see a Molotov cocktail, you're like, that's violence. You can't deny that when a guy comes on campus and tells uh, the Young Republicans Club not to come, that that's like the Statue <laughs> of Liberty. You cannot deny, and this is all logic, it's all reason, and they're all heroes. Okay, let's okay, get okay. to the last all right, one. All right, then. well, okay, like the movie. So the last one that, that we want to highlight here, and this was the one that was sort of the uh, the genesis for for the right wing cartooning episode. Yeah, is a, is a cartoon strip called Day by Day. So that this is good. like this is a deep cut because this is like I was familiar with this back in like the the early aughts. This was like the, some real blogosphere shit, and Day by Day was a cartoon. That was like widely read on in the right wing blogosphere. It got like Glenn Reynolds would boost it all the time. Mm -hmm. I, while I was doing research for this, I found a Glenn Reynolds post where he's like, "The only reason uh, Chris Muir's Day by Day isn't syndicated in every newspaper in America is MSM bias," which is hilarious yeah. to me because this is the most deranged out of every <laughs> oh, one of these comics. Oh, absolutely, This is a comic that started. I guess like in like the early aughts and like yep. the early days of the blogosphere and like every one of the big right wing bloggers would have like a day by day widget yep. on like the side of their blog where you could like just check in every day to see the new day by day. What day by day was, it was like it started out where it's basically these four two couples who are like sort of cool cosmopolitan yeah. young people yeah. who spend every day of day by day <laughs> talking to each other about obscure like blog like topics so they're like <laughs> did you see what fire dog lake said about our president like yeah you know, you know, that's like, all yeah. of it it and would I, just recap like just internecine blog co uh conflicts but what was what's amazing about day by day is that as the the strip went on it started out where it would just be like a tiny figure in the corner and some huge block of text about like uh, I, what were I, like just the bizarre controversies of a bygone era that make no sense anymore, and like they, they but obsess these people back in the day, like some obscure disrespect of George Bush or something even Obama did. However, as the strip went on, not only did Chris Muir, the artist, get progressively more insane to the point where there wasn't even any political content or jokes being offered. Oh, one, one point, though, you should discuss the visuality of it, because that makes us pay off even bigger. <laughs> it looks like circa 1995 Microsoft clip art. Yeah. It's just like absolutely... God, how else would you describe well, it? Well, I don't know. Like he, he, he draws his character like they're all very like young and cool, and like the women in particular were always very, I guess in his view, very hot. And, yeah. And sort of like... Yeah. But as the comic went on, and I guess like the blogosphere sort of went out in favor and it, uh, you know, it was replaced more by social media and you know, right-wing online people you know, sort of got turned on to harder and harder stuff. Yeah. And day by day stopped getting those like, insta-pundit links. He started to like, beg more and more, like, not beg, but like, fundraise for money more directly from his readers. And he began doing that with you know, a strategy I respect, which was just making his comic strip more and more pornographic. Right. <laughs> to the point where like now he's still doing he's still doing cartoons and in almost every one of them there's no punchline, but it's just the, his female characters being naked. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's. Uh, I I think it did start as the fundraisers, where it's like, uh, if you give us twenty five dollars, I'll draw like this woman who looks like Aaron Esherance, like fucking the guy, <laughs> yeah. uh, fucking the general. I, I want to read. I want to read. I just want to read one thing uh, from his list of characters. Like I said, it, fo it focused on these four main characters, or like you know, two different couples. And uh, I just want to read here. Uh, this is the description of one of his characters of Zed Owens. Zed Owens is described as a laconic, goateed product designer who is frequently worried that he may be over the hill. He was born in Gonzales, Texas. So keep, and like, and then, yeah, he's, he's drawn in this kind of, 
you know, cosmopolitan, cool way. He's a product designer. He's a graphic designer. Then it just says, it goes here, here's the turn. It has been revealed that he is a former special operations sniper who has since been recalled <laughs> back to duty in Iraq, whereas one strip revealed he was actively hunting insurgents as a sniper once again. Oh, no. Wait, here's <laughs> Sam. This is Chris's own description. A smoldering redhead who finds herself a mom of two daughters at age 40 with husband Zed. An engineer, she's often in conflict with her overwhelming femininity. <laughs> uh, that yeah. big tip. Oh, no, my tits knocked over my science stuff. Uh, so... <laughs> you want to you want to yeah, describe I, this one? I, I, yeah. I, okay, so this one, oh wow! What the uh, so fuck? This is like <sighs> this is like the cover to that Radiohead uh, album. <laughs> <laughs> this is <laughs> fucking this, jarring. I don't even know like how this is. It looks like he put his weird faces like o over real photos of women lounging in mud, but then like filtered it. Did some Photoshop filter over it, and it's his female <laughs> characters rolling around <laughs> naked in the mud, and one is saying. Zed's hands felt so good on me because I'm too strong a woman for soft antifas and those pajama <laughs> boys. Pajama boy, a great reference to be making in 2017. Timeless classic. They never and then the give other anything says, up. Zed felt great, huh? You can't have my man. And then she says, not him. Don't you get it? There are no men out there. I, I want a damn... He goes, I want, damn it, I want a man. And the other one says, but a man will demand you be feminine, not strong. Well, they do. What do they find feminine? And then someone, like like a shadow <laughs> off screen, like like standing over them, says, "This does her for me, ladies." Meaning that they're like naked, rolling around in mud. Oh, he's jacking off on them. <laughs> <laughs> he's being. So, like, so that's the uh, that's that's the punchline. That's hit, but like it's coming from him, Chris. No, Miller? it's like a no, no. It's like a, a disembodied male character just being like, "This does it for me, ladies." The dark thing about Day by Day is like it's obviously totally irrelevant. It's been irrelevant since like Red State, you know, took off the widget so many years back, <laughs> and he just like, but, but he still ekes out a living from a small but devoted fan base of horny senior citizens, people who have the internet but are not aware that you can get porn on the internet. And I want to read you some comments to the comic that Will just described. Oh, no. Okay, no, you, you got to read it. You got to hear oh, it. Oh no. <clears throat> Guess y'all got different story. standards for feminine there in the zone, Wade, because those roid-like ripples on Sam's bot are freaking me the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know it's the mud, but still, hurry up with the hoses, girls. <laughs> if I wanted to see you all covered up, I'd rather it be in pretty little commando sundresses. I'd, the same guy what? makes another comment. I don't care what the shadow knows or says. Get the mud off. Hey, maybe a good Texas <laughs> rainstorm will come along and the girls can hand wash each other. Now that'd be feminine. Oh, wait, well, That'd be sexy anyway. Sorry, Pam and Co. No guys need it for that, but they'll come around for the hosing later, no doubt. <laughs> this guy is at the public library just jacking <laughs> off. Uh, now, here's a good one. This is from Z-Man51. Oh, my Chris, my old friend. love the Looney Tunes wide eyes in panel four from both Sam and Sky. <laughs> two nubile young females clad in... Two nubile yound females clad in nothing but good old Texas I got mud. yound. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised by a man, Sam, because it's not Zed and Sky, because it is a man, not her usual castrated lip tart accidentally having XY chromosome, <laughs> exhibiting a great oh shit response. Love it. One question, though. In panel two, Sam's work balloons are white while skies are yellow how is sam wearing the dress she took off and smacked sky with in the face while the panels three and four have her appearing nude and sky wearing her dress i know it seems nitpick nitpicking but if both are supposed to be naked then damn it i want to see both naked oh and one other thing the adrenaline fight or flight rush brought on by a sudden surprise as evidenced by wide eyes certain <laughs> other cycle uh, physiological effects occur one fairly common effect is the nipple erection this is brought on by the same involuntarily muscle contractions causing goosebumps adding the cooling effect of the mud dry especially on the nipples both bears should be quote out and proud <laughs> this is the forgotten man that trump was talking about no that's dennis raider <laughs> he's fucking texting from inside the prison oh, dude wait i got I, I got i got one here from another this is another day, recent day by day strip again impossible to discern what the joke is at all this is the first panel is just the back of an S a suv one one speech bubble says you atf guys your emperor won't like you per perving on a diplomat's wife and the other uh, speech bubble says whose wife next panel is two women again nude uh standing in what appears to be a swamp and one character says to the other they're both naked says thanks mom 
just say you were on a diplomatic <laughs> mission to, oh, mom. And then the other one says, Skype, put all your clothes back on now, please. So he's portraying a mother and a daughter being Nude naked together. Being being naked together. This um, is this is what happens. Is when that you, about this, Fast and Furious? This is it, what yeah. happens. It could be yeah, Fast yeah. and Furious, but in the comments, Just, someone the first comment is, "Grandmas are hot." TG, my wife isn't none yet. However, and then what? Next comment says, "Wow, the apples didn't fall far from the tree." And the next one says, "I would say more than apples, and they haven't fallen far." <laughs> This is what happens. Men in prison. Yeah, I know that single one of these people needs to be chemically castrated. Uh, Chris Moyer probably as like a condition for his parole isn't isn't allowed to like be friends with women or something. So he just hasn't talked to a woman in probably about thirty five years, and as a result, he's like. What would two women do together? Oh, they'd be just walking around a swamp with their tits out. <laughs> they'd probably be scissoring their twats in the mud and talking about uh, the estate tax, I think. I, I want to highlight another one. This one is from one of his fundraising pitches. Oh, God. And the bottom is two women, again, nude, <laughs> dressed like the Spartan 300, one saying to the other, near 10,000 readers come here every day, an army. It's only possible because of patrons who stand with us for the year. Close. We need the other 20% to join us and hold the hot gates. Again, making a classic reference to the Spartans at Thermopylae. And he has a little like fundraising bar where he's like, 20% left to go. And, and then like he, he is now drawing himself, addressing his audience. And he says, help us keep their hot gates open. <laughs> So, there, so he's just become sort of like penthouse comics. Yes. There are really horny old conservatives. By war dads. Yeah, by war dads. Guys who like comment on the Raytheon Facebook, these are the guys who are like, can you draw more labias? Well, <laughs> like, do those guys not know what Pornhub is? No. Well, Felix, you'll like this one. Uh, this is another comment by Z-Man. Oh, uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Year Let's find this guy, folks. Years ago... Hey, man. Yeah. Years ago, I found out a friend of mine had been raped, and the rapist was only given 2.5 years. <laughs> I asked her what she would have liked to be the punishment. Yeah, her. This woman exists. This and happen. what she said chilled me. First, build a teepee-type structure in a field out of gasoline and oil-soaked <laughs> logs. In the, middle, in the middle is a groin-high stump with three to four large U staples and a butter knife. The convicted prisoner is brought in, stripped, and his penis stapled to the stump. The logs are then lit. He has a choice of cutting it off with a butter knife or burning alive. And if he does cut it off and makes it out, a <laughs> sniper blows his brains out. <laughs> After recovering my composure and thought about it, I thought it would be a fitting punishment considering the physical and mental destruction the crime causes. Now, if only we can get rid of the snowflake saying it's cruel and unusual. But what is the cartoon that this is responding to? Oh, yeah, no, that's the, be that's the best part. Read, read the okay, cartoon. Th th it says, okay, uh, Hun, my point is the only demographic to vote for the constitutional values over self are white American men. And then the other speech bubble says, married women do. I vote that way anyway. And you think like an engineer, a tiny sample of women voters, do the math. And the woman says, uh-huh, have you done the math? And the guy says, honestly, I stop at 36, 24, 36. Is that a brand? That post? reminds me of what an imaginary woman told me we should do to rapist. <laughs> yeah. Wait, no, no, but like, but, but there's, there's a, a big, book, big block, block of text, big and there's a big text. block of text under this again, completely humorless, bizarre comic strip. With it. Is Chris now speaking again directly to his audience? And he says, "Folks, I'm getting too old to keep up with a hundred Chinese comment spams every day, so there may be comment <laughs> modifications soon. <laughs> also, with the new tune coming up, I can't thank pa each patron individually anymore, which I loved, but I know you want DBD <laughs> up there, not me gabbing, but I always answer email if you want to get in touch with me anytime. The email address will always be on the tune from now on. Smiley face. That's longer than the comic. It takes up more <laughs> yeah, space yeah, in the yeah. panel. Just... I, by the way, I think that the most interesting part of this is not the email, but it's him saying that it's Chinese spam bots. It's like, no, those are your readers. That's your readers saying that insane thing about the gasoline and the fucking butter life. But like, what in that comic, which is ostensibly about how women are too irrational to vote for constitutional values over themselves, unless they think like an engineer, which a tiny yeah. percentage of married women do, male, which is would like a prompt... Uh, Z-Man's bizarre fantasy <laughs> because it's, about, about how to execute rapists. Because as Matt said, this is Dennis Rader. 
He's somehow commenting on day by day through a payphone. Yeah, and sometimes <laughs> <laughs> all of these guys are at, at best. Can, no, wait, wait, can you read the one, one about, Okay, yeah, yeah. one more uh, comment from Z-Man. No, <laughs> no nukes on Berkeley. Just use two thousand pound J dams on each and every classroom and administrative <laughs> building at the school. Then one thousand pounders on each professor's administrator's residence. Next, use laser guided two hundred fifty pound. It just goes on like this. Did you read the one about smoking a cigar and? <laughs> oh shit! I gotta find no, that yeah, one again. Uh, but but oh, read yeah. the read okay. the. I have to go like soon, but I want to hear this. Uh, so this is like the White House, and one speech bubble says, "Of course, I sent uh, B ones over the Norks. They put a man into a coma simply because he was an American." Other speech bubble says, "Sir, we have bike lock wielding professors doing that in California. Is mil is military action how your base would uh, want that you to handle that too?" And then it's like a, a B-1 bomber, and it says, Berkeley, coming up, Major, your pickle is hot. And the other guy says, Jesus, what a great target. And then it's Mitch McConnell going, Mr. President, and then he's saying, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Did you say my base or your base? Again, it's like what a that, like, Which one of their base wants the U U.S. military okay. to carpet bomb Berkeley? I don't know. It's bizarre. Okay, one more, one last okay, comment yeah. from Z-Man51. <sighs> I had a libtard bitch tell me to put that fucking thing, cigar, out before she kicked my ass. One problem, I was an Alabama law enforcement officer. I told her to back off as I was smoking long before she decided to sit down and make a scene. Long story short, a cop came by and told her to leave, and she started cussing and screaming at him, resisted arrest, so I assisted in restraining and cuffing her. That was fun, three exclamation points, smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> Z-Man and the amazing adventures that definitely happened. Z okay, if there is not like a fucking seven terabytes of data, metadata on Z-Man yeah. at the NSA, <laughs> the NSA what is the point of it? Yeah. yeah. I just think a day by day to me is hilarious because of, again, I, I think it sums up everything we've been talking about, about the conservative worldview and the people who subscribe to this in that it's just like nonsensical, no jokes, deranged, extremely horny, and and like I said, the the diary of a madman. Yeah, I like, uh, for for just ten dollars, you can see these characters fuck. So <laughs> you know, take a look day by day cartoon dot com. I don't know. Yeah, it's like I could look at literally anybody <laughs> have sex for free, or I could watch terrible photoshops fuck for ten dollars a month. Well, they're conservative. Okay. It's it's educational. Uh, also, a lot of the comments are like, mm -hmm, "Glad my wife isn't home right now." <laughs> oh god! I mean, if it would, your wife wouldn't like get jealous. She would just, <laughs> like, she'd just be like, "Have you killed somebody? <laughs> like, what the fuck?" Well, this is the most disturbing thing I've ever seen online. Erotic cartoons for like guys who are over sixty is that's a pretty good hustle because Chris Muir, if he had been born thirty years later, he would just be uh, immediately be an anime mar uh, anime Nazi. Like I just know, I don't know right, right, go straight to jacking off the anime. Simple. I think Chris Meyer would he would have gone through like whatever. Who dude, cares? Who cares? Uh, he would have gone through like a litany of sexual retardation before he ended up at whatever he ended up on. Like maybe he would have like he would have moved to one of the countries where they still allow you to have a Jo booth. I don't know. There's one way to settle this. He responds to all emails. Okay, let's and email him. We're gonna email him, so we'll let you know.